Hey guys, it's Layla from Ignite and in today's video I'm going through the 2020 HSC question for human experiences using the example of George Orwell. But before I get into today's content, please do like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications and check out our website Ignite HSC if you're looking for some resources to help you enhance your studies in English in the year ahead. But for now, let's get into today's video. Okay, so what I plan to do in today's clip is to take you through the 2020 question for human experiences, which is the common module that is sat by all students doing the HSC this year. I'll break down the question and then I'm going to give you an exemplar thesis using the prescribed text of 1984. Irrespective of what text you studied, for this module, my process of breaking down the question and talking you through how to write a thesis statement will be helpful. But of course, if you are doing 1984, watching till the very end of the clip will be useful to you specifically. So let's start with last year's question. The question reads, how effectively does your prescribed text tell stories to reveal both the personal and shared nature of human experiences? So before I get into my question breakdown, I wanna take you to that moment in the exam and the way of thinking you need to apply when you're going into that exam situation. So a couple of points to note. First thing, we're running on the assumption here that when you're looking at that question in the exam, you do have a pre-prepared exemplar essay. Now, when we say having something pre-prepared, that's not with the intention of you going into the exam and thinking you can regurgitate everything that's in your exemplar. The purpose here is that you have some quotes, you have material that you will then reframe and adapt to the given question in the exam. And in this video, we're using last year's question to show you how you go through that adaptation process. So you must have that exemplar. What's also really important is that you know where in that exemplar you will be definitely inserting and adapting the wording of the question. So obviously your thesis statement, which is what I'm focusing on today, is 100% candid and responding to the question. You need to reframe your thesis to ensure that you're dealing with the question's key terms. Other high points of adaptation in your exemplar will be in the topic sentences, the way you introduce your points for your body paragraphs, and you'll need to introduce them in a way that is consistent to the overarching argument you framed in your thesis statement. And even parts of the analysis, right? If the question introduced an aspect of form, or a particular technique, that would need to be embedded throughout your response as well. So you have to have an exemplar, and you must factor in planning time. Now, Thinking about the papers more broadly and the essays you go on to write in paper two, typically a 20 mark essay is given 40 minutes. Now in paper one, you have 45 minutes per section. However, I do think the comprehension section is the more difficult section. So I think you should plan to spend 50 minutes on comp and then spend 40 minutes on the essay. The process of looking at the question unpacking the question's key terms and thinking about how you're going to frame your thesis and other points of adaptation in your exemplar takes time. So you really need to know that your exemplar essay that you write can be written in, I would say, under 35 minutes so that you have that time in the exam to look at the question and unpack how you're going to deal with it and adapt to it. And you must think about how the thesis will be supported by the remainder of your essay. So as you're breaking down the question and you're developing your thesis, you really need to make sure that you have foresight. And what I mean by foresight is that you know that the thesis that you've actually presented there at the front of your essay in the very first few sentences can indeed be supported by what you go on to say. So in the process of writing your thesis, you need to ask yourself, what were my points for my body paragraphs and how am I going to use these points to support my thesis? There needs to be consistency in an essay, a good essay at least, and there also needs to be, for the marker, a cumulative proving and substantiating of the thesis you presented initially. So all of this is kind of factored in, in the backstory of when you put pen to paper and you write that first thesis statement. So I just wanted to frame that. That's where you should be in the exam situation. And now I'm gonna talk you through how you unpack the question and how you're gonna use all of that process of drafting the exemplar and timing to help you write a good thesis in the exam. So, if you've watched our other clips, this is going to be mind numbing for you. We always go through these three steps whenever you're looking at a question. Now, firstly, we must identify the keywords in the question. It seems arbitrary, but so many students actually ignore the question in the exam. Look at the question, identify the key terms. 
Second step is to unpack the key terms in the question. And our advice is to use micro questions to help draw out what those key terms mean. Micro questions are words such as, you know, how, why, what, the relevance, to what extent, all of these words help us draw some sort of meaning out of the question's key terms and also gives you scope to use those questions in a way that works for what you want to say, right? The mindset here is to make the question work for you. And the third step is to connect the key terms in the question. So looking at the question that we've been given here, our key terms are tell stories, personal, and shared nature. They're the three primary key terms and human experience is in there, but it's not really a key point that we're focusing on. But nevertheless, it is tell stories, personal and shared nature of human experiences. But when I'm looking at this question, I'm asking myself these micro questions. So the micro questions I've italicized here and I'm showing you my thought process in unpacking the question to make sure I give my marker a thesis that is not simply restating the question but offering something to it. So when I look at the term tell stories, I have to bring that into my thesis. I'm asking myself, well, how does Orwell tell stories? Well, he uses a novel, it's quite dystopian in genre, and it's very realist. There are three ways that he utilizes form to tell these stories. Personal, I'm asking myself, what personal experiences are explored in the text? And the main one, right, is the futile struggle of interpersonal rebellion showcased through the character of Winston. Shared nature, well, what is shared about the personal experiences that are explored in the text? Well, they do evoke more broadly our shared need for connection, autonomy, and agency. So that was my kind of initial brainstorming process looking at last year's question and thinking, okay, how would I come up with something? Now, obviously, what you're taking away here really is the application of the micro questions. How you answered the relevant micro question to each part of that question is obviously going to depend on your exemplar. If you focus in your exemplar on totalitarianism, or if you focus in your exemplar on specifically the sexual relationship between Winston and Julia, then you would answer these questions differently because you're making the thesis work for what you want to go on to say. This thesis and the way I've unpacked the question would look to paragraphs focusing on interpersonal rebellion, a lack of agency, or perhaps the desire for human connection to overcome the totalitarian state. So you see how you're construing the question in a way that works for what you want to go on and say in your essay. So it's quite an empowering tool. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we bothering to unpack the question in this particular way? Because you do not want to simply restate the question in your thesis statement. That does not show the marker that you've understood what the question is asking of you. You don't want to ignore the question in your response either, because that's showing that you've got something pre-prepared, you have no idea how to actually answer the question, and you're completely circumventing it. And that's not going to put you in a very good band in the exam situation. And finally, we need to unpack the question and make it work for you. Like I said, it's quite an empowering process. You have that exemplar, and if your exemplar is applicable to all of the different rubric points, there is nothing that you should be scared of in the question. If your exemplar is dealing with the main purpose of the study of the common module and you've gone through the rubric and you know that that exemplar addresses all different rubric points, you're good to go. So, having said all of that, let's have a look at an exemplar. It is George Orwell's provocative telling of futile rebellion in his dystopian yet highly realist novel form that reveals an interpersonal struggle for love and agency. Effectively, Orwell represents these values as fundamental to our shared need for companionship and independence when confronted by the controlling regimes of a totalitarian state. Does that answer the question? Let's have a look at where I've actually inserted my answering of the question's key terms. So, it is George Orwell's provocative telling of futile rebellion. A nice tip to make sure that you are actually answering the key terms in the question is to use phrases such as of, after the question's key term, or to use an adjective to add value. So here, instead of just saying tell stories or telling, I've said provocative telling, there's the adjective, but then I've added of, I'm unpacking what he actually tells of Futile Rebellion in his dystopian and highly realist novel form. So I'm still unpacking how he does the telling, the form of the text. 
that reveals a personal, you'll notice actually, when I was editing this, I switched it from interpersonal to personal on the next slide because I wanted to actually use the direct wording of the question, but interpersonal still would have worked. Reveals a personal struggle for love and agency. So that's the personal aspect of the human experience being evoked. Effectively, answering this part up here, effectively Orwell represents these values as fundamental to our shared need for companionship and independence shared nature of human experience. So through that personal struggle, he is elucidating this broader shared issue. When confronted by the controlling regimes of a totalitarian state. So what I hope you take away there is how you can really use the question to work for you in the exam. Go through those steps, have your exemplar pre-prepared, time it to make sure you have time to do this unpacking process in the exam and really make sure that when you're embedding the questions key terms in your response, you're not just throwing them in in a way that's not legitimate. You're adding some sort of value there and the value that you're adding should be foregrounding the direction of the essay so that everything else you go on to raise has purpose and indeed supports the thesis that you've brought forward. Okay, guys, that concludes this clip. If you have any questions, please do comment and I will get back to you. But for now, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this content, please do like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications. If you find this sort of exemplar response useful and this process of breaking down questions and walking you through material, you will undoubtedly find value in our online resources. Check out our website at Ignite HSC and our resources will certainly enhance your results and your study through the year ahead. Thank you for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next video.